One instrument that is often discussed as a string instrument is the piano. So why didn't I include it in the last lesson? Think back to the video we watched when I showed how the piano works. Your finger presses the key and a hammer hits the strings. This is the reason it doesn't neatly fit into just one category. It could be seen as either a string or a percussion instrument. I like to put it into its own category, which includes the piano, harpsichord, and organ. The piano is probably one of the most recognizable instruments. You may think that there are only one or two kinds of pianos, but there are actually several. Let's start with the biggest and most expensive. The grand piano, which is the king of the pianos. In the grand piano, the strings are stretched horizontally away from the keyboard with the hammers underneath. There are a lot of different sizes of grand pianos, with the concert grand being the largest. If you remember the discussion of timbre, the concert grand has the most brilliant singing quality of all the grand pianos. You might remember that my own piano is an upright grand. Now what does this mean? It means that the strings are vertical and laid on top of each other to save space. It's much easier to fit an upright grand in a small space. There are also a lot of other smaller options making it possible for people everywhere to own a piano. Now the pictures we've been looking at have all been fairly modern pianos. You might wonder if the piano always looked this way. The answer is no. The piano forte was invented in the early 1700s and it looks similar to the grand piano but definitely smaller and not as sturdy looking. Now, you're probably looking at the name going, wait, piano forte, what's that? Well, if you remember the words piano and forte from our lesson in dynamics, that will give you a clue. Think about it and I'll give you the answer soon. As the years progressed, so did the instrument. Today, you can even buy a grand piano that looks like it would fit on the deck of the Starship Enterprise. Yes, that's a grand piano. One instrument that looks very much like a piano is a harpsichord. In fact, if I put these two pictures side by side, could you even tell the difference? Well, the one on the left is a replica of a period pianoforte, and the one on the right is a harpsichord. Looking at these two, you're probably wondering what the difference is. Well, here's a clue. The first pianoforte was actually called Gravi Cembalo Col Piano e Forte, which basically means harpsichord with soft and loud. Remember our discussion of dynamics? Well, the pianoforte was invented after the harpsichord, and what made it so special was that it could play different dynamic levels. So, what does this tell us about the harpsichord? Well, basically, it has only one dynamic level, and it has only one dynamic level because of a difference in construction. Where the piano has hammers that strike the strings, the harpsichord has a special quill that plucks the strings. This makes the difference in sound very significant.
you can definitely tell that the harpsichord is a very different instrument from the piano. And could you tell from listening to it that there was only one volume level throughout the entire clip? The composer might make the sound more full by having the musician play more notes at a time, basically a chord, or the composer might make the sound a little lighter by having only one note played at a time, but there was no change in the overall volume. Now we know that the piano was invented after the harpsichord, so think about how this new possibility of dynamic changes might have affected the music being written. We'll talk more about this when we discuss the classical period. Okay, the last keyboard instrument we're going to look at is the organ, which like the piano, doesn't fit neatly into one category. We saw that the piano could be a string instrument or percussion instrument. The harpsichord is more of a string instrument, but it's also a keyboard instrument like the piano. Well, the organ is definitely a keyboard instrument, but it doesn't make sound the same way the piano and the harpsichord do. Let's compare these two pictures and see if you can guess how the organ makes the sound. The picture on the left is obviously a whistle. Can you guess what the picture on the right is? Does this help? Yes, these are organ pipes. Can you see the similarity between the pipes and the whistle? Basically, the organ is a big wind instrument that blows air across the tops of the pipes. And the pipes can be big enough to cover an entire wall. The church pipe organ is not just a musical instrument. It's a monument of art and architecture. Really, really magnificent. As you can see, organs often have several keyboards. This one has four. And they also often have a keyboard for the feet. Let's take a look at a close-up of the pedal keyboard. You can see it's set up just like the keyboards on the top. It's like a big piano for the feet. I'm always amazed to watch an organist play three or four keyboards and get their feet going. I can barely keep up with two hands doing two different things at the same time, which is why I'm a singer and not a pianist. The organ will have many different stops or settings to make the pipes mimic different instruments. So if you go to church, you'll see the little buttons that they can pull and press and push and do all sorts of mysterious things with. And it'll say, you know, flute one, flute two, flute three, oboe, bassoon, clarinet, all the different sounds. It doesn't sound exactly like that instrument, but it mimics it. And it makes the organ music more versatile and interesting. A professional organist needs to be able to play several keyboards at once, including the foot keyboard, and when you listen to it, it sounds like there's several people playing at once. music is really amazing, especially if you can experience it live. Just imagine all of that sound buzzing through the floor and the pews in a church. If you ever get the chance to hear a professional organist play in a church with large pipes, by all means, do so. Now at this point, you might remember the tiny little organ in the church where you grew up. And you might say, that really wasn't connected to huge pipes in the wall. 
Well, that's because in 1935, Lawrence Hammond invented the electric organ, which gave small churches the chance to use the organ in their services. The Hammond organ had a distinct sound and became very important in many different styles of music. And perhaps you remember this old song. Now we're going to close out this lesson on keyboards with one of my favorite pieces for piano and orchestra. After this, lesson six is coming up and we'll start exploring the woodwinds. Thank you. 